All right, everyone, welcome back to our RRAR interview series, the first of 2024. Joining me today is John McBride. John serves as an RRAR Board of Directors member. He is also the chair of our GPIC, Government Policy and Issues Committee. So, John, thanks for joining me to uh, have a little bit of a conversation. Appreciate it. Absolutely, Kevin. And first of all, thank you for having me on this uh, important uh, interview series that you have. I think uh, our members certainly get a lot out of what you bring to the table and looking forward to being part of that. So thank you for having me and very excited. Yeah, of course, John. So before we get uh, into some of the questions, I think it's important for um, the for our members who are listening who might not know you, just a little bit about yourself, your background, and your path to, to uh, uh, real estate. Sure. Well, first and foremost, I am a North Carolina native, born and raised here. I grew up in Southern Ponds, which not too far uh, from Raleigh. And in fact, I think we're starting to see a lot more growth, even getting into Lee and, and more counties uh, towards that direction uh, for uh, a lot of our buyers and sellers in the market. So it's just interesting to see how much Raleigh has has really grown and expanded. Um, but I uh, grew up in, in, like I said, Southern Ponds, played basketball and in, in, in ended up going to University of North Carolina at Pembroke, played basketball for Pembroke, loved uh, having that um, North Carolina flair to everything I've done. I've never lived anywhere else. It's just been an important part and, and foundation of my life. And uh, I knew um, growing up, my parents were divorced. So I, I grew up with my dad, but my mom lived in Raleigh. And so Raleigh was always a second home. And I grew up and uh, mom moved here in 1979. And so it's been my second home. And I knew even uh, going through high school and eventually then to college that where, when I finished my college uh, career, I wanted to live in Raleigh because I loved Raleigh. I loved everything, all the energy and what it brought uh, to our community. And and soon as I graduated, I moved right into Raleigh. So a uh, big part of my life and it's where I wanted to go now. From a real estate perspective, in 1996, um, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, uh, recommended that uh, I get my uh, work with a mortgage broker. And I'm like, I don't know. You know, I just I didn't even know how to spell mortgage at the time. And uh, lo and behold, he invited me into his office and was, I got to see what he did on a daily basis. And I'm like, holy cow, you know, I could certainly do that. I love sales. I love getting out and meeting people and being a part of that relationship building aspect. And I'm like, I fell in love with it. So in February 96, uh, I became a mortgage banker and never looked back. So I love the real estate industry and learned a great deal, especially about sales and relationship building. Uh, because at that time, uh, this was before, you know, we, we did have a fax machine, but this is for the internet and before, you know, before really cell phones really took off. So it was all about relationship, old school relationship building, knocking on doors, going to real estate offices and developing relationships. Um, so I did that for many, many years, did that for 19 years and just decided that I needed a new challenge. I was kind of bored in that role and uh, wanted and I knew real estate. I didn't want to leave real estate in terms, but but I didn't want to sit behind a desk all day either. So decided to make that change to a real estate agent, got my license and uh, it's been pretty awesome ever since. That's great. That's an awesome story. And, uh, you know, I think it's I think it's rare now to meet people that have lived their whole life in uh, in uh, North Carolina. Usually it's people like me from New York or from the North. Exactly. Here, so. We have a, a lot of transplants from outside of North Carolina. But that that brings uh, brings to light all the different dynamics of our community. And sure. while we do have some North Carolina natives, uh, a majority of the people I think this day and age, especially in the Raleigh market, are from outside of North Carolina. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. So with this year, John, um, you. you're the chair, as we mentioned, of the Government Policy and Issues Committee. Um, you know, what are your plans for 2024 uh, with GPIC? And then additionally, why GPIC plays such an important role within the association and uh, to the membership? Yeah, so let, let's touch on that first. Um, the Government Policies and Issues Committee, or GPIC as we call it, is a really one of the major pillars of our strategic plan. You know, when we look at um, advocating for a better community, that's really the spirit of GPIC. And a lot of what we do is centered around 
working with our elected officials and developing and honing those relationships because real estate, whether we like it or not, is a cornerstone of the, the legislative system. Um, and I can't remember where this statistic came from, and I, and I hate that I can't tell you that, but uh, every real estate transaction in North Carolina brings around $110,000 in economic benefit to North Carolina. That's a staggering number. And it, it brings to light how important real estate is, not only in terms of building generational wealth for North Carolinians, but also how important it is in terms of economic value to North Carolina. And then that also feeds right into that legislative power that real estate is and that symbiotic relationship that realtors have with our legislators is so important and vital because uh, in terms of crafting legislation or crafting policies that are beneficial to uh, our homeowners and our home buyers, I think it's important that we have that tight relationship that brings brings into uh, crafting legislation that betters our community. And so GPIC is so vital to that relationship with our officials uh, and our association. And so it's uh, very near and dear to my heart and very excited to be chair in this year. I mean, fortunately, we had Monique Edwards that was chair last year. And I think I learned, for me personally, I learned so much under her leadership that the value of that relationship is with our officials. And she's done a wonderful job. So we're hoping to carry on what she has done for GPIC uh, on to this year. And I think we're we're certainly spearheaded that in the right direction. On a very critical year this year, being a, 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 the election year for Wake County and, and Wake officials, as well as our national elections coming up. So very important year for us. You mentioned... Um... Monique Edwards, um, who started the LPC program, local political coordinator program here with RAR. But, um, you know, this year there's a focus on really expanding that program and it's becoming a major government affairs effort here at RAR. Um, you mentioned the relationships with the local elected officials and how important that is. Um, how do you foresee this program impacting those relationships, you know, for years to come and, um, your excitement level about this program expanding? Yeah, great question. Um, our LPC program is really just in its infancy. And we have been able to put together uh, just some stellar real estate uh, realtor members of our association to help uh, build those relationships with our local officials. And I cannot tell you how excited I am that we're gonna build that throughout this year, the framework around the LPC program and strengthen those relationships with our local officials. I'll give you an example. And Kevin, you've been vital with this, but with the town of Garner, um, Mayor Gupton and the CEO of the uh, Chamber of Commerce as well have invited us really to have a seat, an influential seat at the table to work with Garner and their officials on crafting policies and procedures to build the Garner housing side of, of their community. And I can't tell you how important that is in, in helping to shape our local communities and their policies around real estate, which is only going to help our overall communities. And so when we think about our, our clients that we serve, both buyers, sellers, and even uh, uh, renters, is making sure that that relationship with our local officials is so strong. And so Mayor Gupton has reached out to us and you've done an instrumental job with the town of Garner as all of our other communities. That's just one example of the many great things that we're doing and how important that LPC program is to our association and our community. And I'm so excited. That's just one of the, uh, really the bedrocks I think of this year is gonna be really strengthening this LPC program to something pretty stellar. Yeah. I totally agree. And I think it's I think it's been a great collaborative effort from GPIC, from leadership, from the members to really get that program off the ground. Um, yeah, and so thankful for our LPCs that we have. I know Shannon Bryan's kind of spearheading that uh, leadership yeah. role this year for us overseeing the LPC program. But it speaks volumes to the members stepping up and putting forth those efforts uh, with our local officials. And man, I'm just so excited. I, I just... Every time we have a meeting and we're in, and I'm hearing from these LPCs, it's just so exciting to talk to them. Yeah, I agree. Um, 
You know, speaking of member value, um, a lot of events this year are going to be hosted uh, by GPIC or co-hosted. I know in June we have a DEI and GPIC joint event, but February 7th, we'll have our first GPIC event of the year. It'll be a roundtable uh, featuring um, uh, Wake and uh, Wake County Commissioners and a Raleigh City Council member. Um, already, be even at the time we're recording this, I think we're three weeks out, we have over a uh, hundred members registered for this event. So, you know, what is the focus for bringing in these prominent names in the area and what kind of conversations and value will that have to the membership this year? Yeah. So uh, first of all, these events with our local officials are so vital, especially in a pivotal situation that we're facing right now with inventory shortages, where we've, we've got some infrastructure questions as how we're we're dealing with all of the growth, the rapid growth that the, the Raleigh area is seeing. So it's vital to really have these relationships with our local officials, bringing them to our association, to have these roundtable discussion, hearing from our members and their concerns and their questions that they have, I think is so vital, not only to bring value to our members that, that are in the trenches every day, working with clients and buyers and sellers, and hearing from them firsthand on their struggles and concerns. And now we're able to bring that back firsthand to our elected officials is, you know, it's paramount. It's so vital, I think, to have that relationship. And you talked about the collaborative efforts that we've got. This is just one of those uh, uh, few mechanisms that we've got to work with our local officials. So it's very exciting. I'm glad the turnout already has been astronomical. I hope we just fill the room, standing room only. Uh, yeah. And I think we can do that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's great to see members buying into the events and wanting to show up. I think that's a great start for GPIC and for what we're trying to accomplish this year. Um, you know, in addition to you being the chair of GPIC, you're also a trustee for RPAC, major investor, all that good stuff. Um, you know, for, for, the, for, the, for the people that haven't contributed to RPAC yet, they've probably heard of it or they have heard rumors of what RPAC is, maybe trying to understand it a little bit better. Um. Why is it so important to contribute and support RPAC? And, um, you know, how have you seen it grow since you first started uh, contributing? Yeah, so uh, for those of you not familiar, RPAC is our Real Realtors Political Action Committee. It's nonpartisan. That is first and foremost something to understand. Uh, and we work to help support those candidates whose values and positions are in line with real estate and realtors in general. And uh, for example, one of the uh, the many the, the, on a state level, one of the things that we fight constantly is about uh, sales commission or taxes on our sales commissions. Um, the government is always looking for ways to help budget to uh, to shore up the budgets, right? And so they look at realtors as a possible way that if we tax commissions for real estate agents. Um, that's an avenue we can get more revenue back to the budget for the state level. Well, imagine if you're a realtor and let's say you close um, one transaction every quarter, right? So you close in four transactions a year. If North Carolina decides, you know, we're going to tax you seven and a quarter percent on your commissions. How is that going to impact you? So it's a huge financial loss that we would endure if as agents, if we had to pay commissions on top of our sales tax on top of our commissions. So that's one of the many things that we have successfully fought for year after year. Uh, and just imagine if you had to pay that tax, how would that impact a member? And so that's one of the many ways that I think members can look at the direct financial impact of the value of what RPAC investments make. We're fighting not only for our industry and realtors in general, but also we fight for many things for um, the owners of property, your property rights. What are the ways that RPAC you know, helps fight things that come up every single year? And I can tell you, we're, we're the largest PAC in the state of North Carolina. And we're very fortunate that we have these wonderful relationships with other, our elected officials. But at the end of the day, if we can't help them financially with their uh, campaigns and the, the, their ability to get reelected or even elected to their office, you know, what? how are we working that relationship? And so our PAC is one of those vehicles that helps really endure and strengthen those relationships with our officials. And I think it's important as realtors that we dive deep into looking at 
is this really a good investment for my money? And I will tell you, it absolutely is. And for just $15 a year, you are participating in RPAC. And I think that's such an important role that a lot of realtors can look into. Yeah, spot on with that, I think. Um, my final question for you before I let you go, uh, we've kind of mentioned it briefly, but what do you think is the biggest challenge facing uh, realtors, facing uh, the industry, um, but specifically here in Wake and Harnett County? Um, and from a legislative perspective or from a government affairs perspective, how do we make changes so that um, these problems are avoided or solved uh, in the years to come? Yeah, so it's really, um, excuse me, just one second. It's really too strong. And uh, one of the biggest challenges we have right now is creating enough inventory. Please, can you answer that, please? Um, is is uh, creating enough inventory for the buyers that we have moving into the area. Um, that is a that is a challenge for us. Uh, the other opportunity we have is looking at make sure that we have affordable housing options for those workers who work in our markets, right? That that uh, teachers and firemen and police officers, and making sure that they can afford to live in the communities that they serve. Right. And so, having an affordable housing uh, option is something that we're working really hard to, with our elected officials to solve. Those two problems, inventory and affordable housing, are two big. Uh, options that we're, we need to partner with our officials on. Yeah, for sure. Well, John, I think, you know, great insight to what GPIC, to our LPC, what RRA, our government affairs is doing as a whole. So, you know, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, for I'll just for interrupt you too. My daughter was calling and I wanted to make sure I got that. Yeah, so. no, no, I totally understand that. And kids always come first. I get that. So um, now thanks for everything you do. Personally, thanks for everything you've done for me and been a great support for me. So I appreciate it, John, and thanks for doing this today. Thank you, Kevin. It was nice talking to you and looking forward to uh, our collaborating further with you together at the association. Sure thing. Thanks, John. Yes, sir.